Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. It's Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. So today we are talking Big Brother. As you guys know, our historic female black winner, Taylor Hale, has been still doing interviews, you guys. And on the latest interview about mental health, you guys, that I will link into the comments with Nicole Weaver. So as you guys know, in many of these interviews, um, a lot of people will ask what Taylor's status is with people in the cast and this and that. But as it specifically pertains to Monty and Terrence, these are some interesting comments because as you guys know, they didn't just make comments about Taylor, you know, in the house that also, you know, engineered her bullying and everything else. And even after all of the bullying and ostracization took place, they still were going after her. But not only that, that, they took it a step further and implied in certain podcast interviews that Taylor's win was influenced by the outside world and that this wasn't, you know, tried to diminish her win, tried not to say that it was legitimate and all of these things. And so I felt that this was a really good question that, um, you know, Nicole Weaver had presented to Taylor. So we are going to listen to this portion and um, then I'm going to react. So let's get to it. How do you feel about Monty and Taylor's comment? Or sorry, Terrence. Jeez. Monty and Terrence's comments about your win and how the jury voted. It's pretty infuriating. Um, I think I, I know what it's like to lose a big competition. I did not play some SUSA. I've lost state competitions over and over. Um, and I know both Monty and Terrence have lost at some point in their lives. It's interesting because if you look at the game, there are many points in the game, like many black women do, where I continue unless until i'm given an explicit reason not to i continue to defend them in the game as human beings as black men i continue to defend and look out and protect them to the to my best extent to still lean in after the game is done and look for every reason to discredit my win to look for every reason when you were an active participant and reasons why i almost went out the door the first few weeks in the house why people started to continue to believe the stigma about me my conversations continued to happen throughout the entire game about me to take that and still carry it to try to take away my win to delegitimize my win to convince the public that my win was only because people wanted to rehab their own images or they felt bad for me when the core of this game is a social game and what i had to play i was not given the space to play any other game what i had to play was the social game to attempt to do to delegitimize that is infuriating pointing it's embarrassing frankly because i do my best to not talk about monty or tara because i it still matters to me to protect their reputation as black men, as black people who played Big Brother. And for them to try to insinuate that I, as a black woman, only got to where I was because I played the cards, race card, gender card, et cetera, et cetera. It is very, very infuriating, and it's a reason why I've distanced myself from them personally. So a lot to unpack from that particular statement from Taylor um, from this interview, you guys, with Nicole Weaver that was outstanding. And I want to kind of preface this by saying this, you know, um, for those of us who are black, who are African American, you know, we are, you know, there's some type of camaraderie, right? There's some type of camaraderie and, you know, kind of this unspoken thing where, you know, we'll try to always root for each other. If we're in a situation where, you know, if it doesn't matter if it's work or like a group thing or something to where you know that we are going to be working together as black people and there's already, you know, limited number of us in certain spaces to begin with, it's kind of like this unspoken thing like, hey, we're cool. I'm gonna try to look out for you. Like everything is on the up and up until you give me a reason to not be on the up and up with you. And in the case of Taylor, she didn't really know the extent of how against Terrence and Monty were against her and how much of an impact that they, you know, facilitated, you know, Taylor's early bullying, ostracization, and all of the gaslighting and the lies that was being told to the house that they would, you know, get on their whole as a black man, you know, speech to basically excuse, you know, the white house guests in the house and other people of color to go after Taylor. After unfounded allegations, you guys, after people 
people purposely making up lies in the game to target Taylor that had nothing to do with anything pertaining to the actual game, you guys. Had nothing pertaining to do with the actual game, and all of this stemmed from negativity, hatred, and jealousy that Taylor was confident that she was a beautiful black woman, that she had previously won in pageants and things of that nature. They wanted to find ways to humble her. They wanted to find ways to take her down. And because she wasn't acting like the stereotypical, you know, things that people expect black women to have and to be angry and to cuss people out and to do all of these things because that didn't happen they figured okay well we'll just continue to lean in into this negativity into this bullying and we can see how far we can break taylor down right and it's very annoying because it was both terrence and monty and it was implied to britney in a podcast interview as well that the only reason that taylor hale won was because people felt sorry for Taylor or you know the trying to imply some of these podcast interviews were specifically you know trying to lead the jury members into voting for Taylor and here's the thing you guys here's the thing Taylor's social game and jury management solidified her votes before these people were even evicted you guys before these people even went to do their press tour post eviction um each and every single week that that took place you guys by the time it was up for indies you know eviction she was already team taylor her and taylor had formed a friendship and this was somebody who from day one didn't like taylor because she thought that taylor was after monty you guys so you know to diminish the win and try to say that it's only because of interviews if you look back at a lot of these interviews especially with the jury members a lot of their questions really didn't have to do with taylor when you think about it right and the only ones that really got the meat of the taylor questions were the pre-jurors they got the meat of the taylor um questions because they were a part of you know some of the worst treatment and then i would say terrence got you know some taylor questions because he had all this stuff to say about her he had all this stuff to say about her kept her name in his mouth and this and that but again it had nothing to do with the game this was involving personal attacks you guys and to diminish this and to just say that you know oh the public because the public likes taylor because you know taylor won afp and this and that 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 was the influence no 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 no, 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 no. You guys, Taylor secured her win before these people even went to jury. She secured her win before these people went to jury. And last I checked, Terrence, nobody forced you to vote for Taylor. Nobody was holding a gun to your head. Nobody kidnapped you. Nobody had you in witness protection. Nobody held you against your will and said you have to vote Taylor to win or else because she already secured her votes, you guys. She already secured her votes. I already knew that Joseph was a lock for Taylor. I already knew that Jasmine was a lock for Taylor. I already knew Andy was lock for Taylor and that if Alyssa was still staying and that Michael and Brittany were most likely locked for Taylor so those were really her votes you guys and then it was really just going to depend on Alyssa if she was still you know team you know women and everything else and Kyle I felt it was kind of 50 50 and Turner I wasn't even expecting him to vote for Taylor even if he knew that everybody else voted for Taylor that he was still going to go with who he thought was going to be his final two so um so there is that but it's like these people and after that speech you guys after that speech that taylor gave finale night i have no idea why there's even a question why she won her answers she blew monty out of the water monty assumed because he was a man and that he won more competitions than taylor and the fact that he won the final hoh and took himself to the end that that was enough for him to win you guys because he completely bombed all of his jury questions he bombed his final speech and you know still feels a certain type of way about losing to taylor to the point he is trying to imply that the jury sans turner were influenced to vote for taylor when taylor had their votes before they left the house you guys taylor had their jury votes before they left the house and the only thing extensive that took place in the jury house was for people to discuss more in depth Taylor's game and compare it to the rest of the people who were still in the house and still eligible to win the 750k you guys but it's just sad because it's like as black women again we try to look out for each other we try to protect each other we try to look out for black men 
we try to protect black men. And even in this interview, Taylor doesn't even go in as I, you know, as I know she wants to on Monty and Terrence, but what they are displaying is very disrespectful, is very disgusting. And again, if your only way to be in the news is to talk negatively about a black woman, you need to reevaluate your life, you guys. You need to reevaluate your life that the reason that you were getting interviews in the first place is so that you can use those platforms to bash Taylor and, you know, try to invalidate her win. And then what pisses me off as well is these are the same people, specifically Monty, who do not want to watch the show back, you guys, who do not want to watch the show back and watch the live feeds of their specific comments that they made about Taylor and basically gave a blanket apology, you guys. And it's like, no, 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 no. And talking about you don't want to watch for your mental health. No, 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 no. If you know what you said and you know what you did, unless you were living under a rock, those clips are flying around all social media platforms, you guys. You know what you said, you know what you did because you had the wherewithal to have a conversation with Taylor about what happened with the Paloma situation. So if you are aware of that, if that was still on your mind that many weeks later into the game, you know what you said from the beginning of the game until now. And even in Kat Dunn's podcast, remember, um, you know, she had to show a clip up to Monty's face because he was trying to play dumb. Like he had no clue what she was talking about. Like she just pulled a clip out of thin air, you guys, until she showed the receipt and Monty had no choice but to respond, you guys. He knows what he said. He's posting away talking about how, you know, how good his mental health is and how he's working out and how he's doing all these positive things and promoting himself and promoting his appearance this week on Bold and the Beautiful. He knows exactly what he's doing, right? He knows exactly what he's doing. The problem is he does not want to say he's sorry. He does not want to give a genuine apology, you guys. He does not want to own anything that he has said about Taylor because there is a part of him that still wants it to be true to validate his hurt feelings about losing the show. And that's really what this is at the bottom line. These people are jealous. These people are insecure. And these people feel a certain type of way. And so the only way that can validate that is not watching back their own disgusting behavior, but taking it out on a black woman and taking it out on the first black female winner of the U.S. version in 24 seasons, you guys. And it's very disgusting. It is very disgusting. It is very disturbing that instead of being known for where you placed in the game, what you did in the game, any type of positive impact you happen to have in the game all of that is out the window because now all Terrence and Monty are going to be associated with is not only bullying and disrespecting Taylor in the house and engineering the bullying that took place for the for the first few weeks in the house and even after that even after the bullying and ostracization and everything else you know had died down you still were bashing her behind her back you still were talking reckless about her behind her back and even telling her to her face that she deserved to be bullied and that she was condescending and all of these things, you guys, you still had an opportunity to come out of the house and look at all of the footage and evaluate that, hey, I messed up. I was wrong. I shouldn't have said these things. I shouldn't have done these things. I genuinely apologize for saying this, for doing this, and making you feel this, and we could have squashed this, you guys. But the fact that they want to, specifically Monty and Terrence, want to double down and pretend like they have amnesia and they have no idea what is on the footage and refuse to watch back any of the show when that's hogwash because, Monty, I saw you lurking a few times when Taylor and Joseph did watchbacks of the season at Todrick's house. You would sneak in to try to see what episode they were on and you know try to give commentary and try to make it seem like everything was on the up and up but now all of a sudden you don't want to watch for your mental health and want to give blanket apologies for things that you do not know what you're actually apologizing for no 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 and now this is what you guys are going to be known for you're going to be known for the people who not only bullied taylor in the house and gave permission to the white counterpart house guests and other people of color house guests in the house to also bully and you know treat taylor like crap and make up lies 
lies about her that had nothing to do with the game that was 150% personal, but you come out of the house, even with the knowledge and having some degree of some of the things that you said, because it was pointed out specifically in your podcast interviews and you still double down and you not only double down, but you imply that somehow the win is tainted, that somehow Taylor's win needs to be diminished, that somehow Taylor's win was influenced by the outside world and everything else to try to take away from her moment, to try to take away from her winning. And all it does is it just makes you guys look bitter. It makes it look like you don't give a damn about black women and you know, their success and everything that they've been through. And we should be celebrating Taylor. We should be celebrating this historic win. And instead we have to, again, deal with your BS that you're telling these people in these interviews because you refuse to just own your stuff like a grown man, you guys. And I'm just over it. I am just over it. And it's just, it's so disgusting because at least other people in the cast have the decency to realize by the time it was, you know, time for them to be evicted or immediately once the show wrapped, you know, the magnitude of some of the things that they said and did behind Taylor's back and gave actual genuine apologies, gave specific apologies of specific things that they said and made comments for and made assumptions for about Taylor to where Taylor knew, okay, this person really seems like they genuinely are trying to repair things with me um to go to the contrast of people who said for the entire 82 days you know all kinds of reckless things about Taylor and then goes out of the house to say even more disgusting things in these interviews and imply that there's something wrong with the wind to make themselves feel better is just low it's just low and it's disgusting and it's disturbing and we're not going to allow it we are not going to allow it we are going to continue to legitimize Taylor's win we are going to continue to acknowledge all of the positive things that Taylor did in this historic win. We're going to acknowledge one hell of a social game that she had. We're going to acknowledge the comp wins that she needed to have when need be. We are going to acknowledge her strategic mind and how she saw through all of her house guests and what their strengths and weaknesses were and saw when certain people needed to go, even if it was people in her own alliance, even if it was somebody in her own final three so that it opened the path for her to get to her own victory, you guys. We are going to continue to celebrate that and we are not going to acknowledge the BS that Terrence and Monty keep trying to put out there, you guys. So there is that. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.